In this video, we're going to start looking at creating some filtering rules um, for us for, us, for different departments. Now, one of the things you're probably going to want to do is uh, base rules on different departments or AD groups within your firm. Uh, you know, your marketing department might need access to things different to your normal users, or your HR department might need access to job sites, etc., like that. So, to do that, we need to put some authentication rules in. Um, with Web Gateway and Internet Explorer, is a pretty seamless seamless setup so it's, it's pretty easy to do so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to need to uh, create a new rule set and we could go through and do it all manually but as I said before one of the cool things about the McAfee is it has a kind of rule set library so we can go into this rule set library and we can pick up the authentication rule sets and what we're looking for is explicit authentication um, an authorization this, this particular rule here okay it's, it comes up always with um, uh, conflicts because of the naming so we just hit auto resolve um, and grief, uh, renaming and click OK so this has brought this into the wrong place we want to put this in after the global whitelist but at a root level uh, so we need to drag drag that to root level and then just drag it down here now the reason why we want to put it after global whitelist is uh, if you remember from one of the earlier videos we spoke about how we can use these to um, check that there's not a, you know two clear websites that need that need access to the internet but you can't uh, necessarily provide credentials such as web services or go to meeting webex those kind of things so we need to make sure this rule is above the one that demands you to log in um, so that otherwise when it hits the rule uh, stop cycle it won't go down if this was below it it would get stuck here and this rule would be useless okay so we're going to unlock this like I do with all my rules so if we uh, have a quick look here we can see the um, authentication always happens on the request and this particular rule set here actually does have criteria if we look at it basically what it's saying is it's only going to force authentication if it is on the HTTP or the HTTPS protocol now we can see that by default um, what it's going to do is allow you to uh, build in a rule here that allows you to create URLs that do not require um, authentication so this could be a compromise as opposed to putting it in a global whitelist um, there's no particular reason why we couldn't put like the WebExes and stuff in this one it would stop it being processed here it's kind of like just a preference really so we're going to go down and have a look at authentication using user database now we want to change this to uh, using Active Directory so I'm just going to rename this rule okay. and we can see that this uh, rule set here will only fire if the person so authentication is false and or authentication has failed so if you've already authenticated then it's going to just ignore this one okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go into this rule here and the rule is looking for users that are in a user database now we want to change this to active directory so in out, this is looking uh, for users in its internal database. What we want to do is get it to look up uh, users in Active Directory. So we're going to create a new uh, AD. And we're going to fill in our credentials here. So this is uh, the, the domain. Okay, allow us to test. And it comes up with what groups I'm in here. So this is now set to a active directory. Select OK. 
and finish and save. So it's now going to force everyone that comes uh, through this proxy server to authenticate with Active Directory. And what we also need to do is um, we can set this rule here to uh, allow users only in certain groups to uh, access the internet. But for the moment, I'm going to delete this because we don't need it. So what we're saying here is we're going to use the user database. Um, and if they authenticate on Active Directory, uh, then we're going to allow them through. Otherwise, we are going to block them. OK, so now we've set up the, um, uh, the authentication rule. We are going to use this to apply it to specific filters. So un it's going to be unlikely that one, uh, one rule will fit for everyone. So what we can do is we can ha either have uh, category allow lists um, or URL allow lists based on groups that people are in or in Active Directory. So how do we set this up? The point would be to have kind of like your base categories try and do your categories first so you want to set your block list to be what like 90% of people are going to have so your core ones the ones that are going to be relevant to everybody so your, your, your sexual um, sexual material pornography um, and there's a lot more ones that involve like dangerous downloads malware so now we can create a category uh, unblock list for say the marketing department this could be important because generally a lot of firms like to block your social media but for marketing it's probably quite important they have access to social media but there also may be some other um, categories as well now we don't want to have to go and unblock each individual um, website for marketing so what we're going to do is we're going to go and create a category allow list so we need to first of all build this list and we're going to go into our lists and we're going to go into our category and we're going to add and we're going to call this allow. Okay, it's a category type of list and we can click OK. Sorry, we edit it. We can now um, add categories to this list. So for instance, social networking. So this is our standard, our global list. You might want to rename this to call it like your global category list. And this is your marketing allow, marketing allow list. So we return to our rule set. The question is where in this list do we, we put this marketing allow rule? Now obviously it's got to be above the block list here because uh, once we hit this and we block the page, that's it, no more processing happens. So we're gonna to have to put it up here. So we're gonna add a rule. I'm going to call this the uh, marketing allow list. Um, and we're going to add a list here. And we're going to say uh, contains. Okay. So we're going to go for the URL categories is at, uh, at least one of the, in, sorry, at least one is in the list of marketing allow. And so what we're going to do when we hit this, so you, you, we're going to, in a minute, set up a criteria to make sure that they're in the, um, in the marketing Active Directory group. But when they hit this, what we're going to do is stop rule set. Not stop cycle, because we still want it to go down and check the, these sites for antivirus. We're just going to stop the rule set. Now you'll notice these others have um, the links that you can click on to go straight into the list. Now why does this not? And that's because I've actually spelt marketing wrong. If we, spelt, if we correct that spelling, now I've corrected that, you'll see that it's um, underlined. Now this makes it easier to be able to double click and take you into the list that you created. The trick is here is to make sure that your rule name okay, has in it the name of the list. So the list we named marketing allow. I called the rule when I created it marketing allow list. So as long as I've got the same, uh, the same name there, it allows me to double click in and just makes it easier as opposed to having to keep navigating to the list and here each time to make any changes. Okay, so what we need to do now 
is go and create an Active Directory group for marketing. So we're going to quickly uh, create a group called marketing. And I'm going to have one member in here. And I have a James in here. So at the moment, everybody is part of the marketing allow list because the criteria is just basically saying if you're if the URL is in the marketing or the URL of the category is in the marketing allow list, then stop processing. So just to uh, tidy everything up, let's just make sure we know where we are. So social networking is blocked for everyone. There's nothing in the uh, block list. And I'm just going to remove Twitter from the allow list just to keep things consistent. Right, because we have now um, created this marketing allow list, but not tied it down to the marketing group, we will see that everybody will have access to Facebook. Just prove that, yeah, Facebook. If I disabled this rule, we can see it's now blocked. So what we now need to do is link this marketing allow list to the Active Directory group. And we do that by editing and going to rule uh, criteria and selecting add, user group criteria, authenticate user group, and select contains, and we type our group here. So basically saying the authenticated user group um, contains marketing. Okay, so now if we go back to our user, um, you can see I'm administrator, which is not part of the marketing group, so this should now be blocked. Okay, it's not blocked, so I must have made a mistake. So let's go back and look at the rule. Okay, and straight away I can see the problem. What I've said here is, okay, so if the website is in the uh, marketing allow category group, i.e. social media, or is a member of the marketing group, allow it. Now this should be an and, not an or, because we want to make sure that it's in the marketing allow list and you are a member of the marketing group. If I come back over here now and hit refresh, you'll see it is blocked, which is as we expected. So now if I uh, log on as a member of the uh, marketing group, So here I have now logged on as James, who is a member of the marketing group. Um, and if we go to Facebook, we can see we can now, now get in with no problem at all. Go back to my user that's an administrator. Can't get in. Of course, if we now go to the marketing group and say add the administrator, We can now get in. So what we've done there is given an allow list to marketing. So based on an AD group, we're now allowing them to get into um, uh, an individual uh, set of categories. So for completeness, I'm just going to quickly go through and do the same thing exactly again um, for unblocking individual websites for such a group, say for instance, directors. So instead of doing it on a whole category, i.e. social networking, we're going to create an allow list just for partners or directors. Um, so as you see here, if we did a whitelist, this whitelist sit for everyone. So we may not want to do that. So we we'll start again by going to our lists. This list for individual websites are called wildcard expressions. We're going to create a new wildcard expression. We're going to call this the directors allow list. Okay, so we're gonna come back here and now create the rule. Uh, so we're gonna call this the directors allow list rule. Okay, criteria here, we're gonna add. And we're not doing on web category now, we're doing it on URL filtering. And we're gonna say uh, matches in list. And we're gonna say directors allow list. Okay, URL matches in list, directors allow list. What's the, uh, oh, right, now we're gonna, we're gonna add the criteria. Uh, so we're going to say is in group. OK, 
contains directors. Make sure we change that to an AND. Action is going to be um, stop rule set. I'm going to finish. I'm going to move this above the block because obviously. Um, now what we have to decide here is whether this rule is going to override the block list. So at the moment, even if we put say, I don't know, hotmail in a director's allow list, if it was in the block list, then it would still get blocked. So you may want to move this above or below the block list, depending on what your level of importance you are putting on your block list. We're going to shoot over to our, over to our active directory and we're going to create a group called directors. We're going to add administrator in here, but not the James. Um, we're going to take administrators out of marketing. So the administrator should now be blocked on Facebook, as we would expect. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add the exception for Facebook. So we are going to do okay. So that's just an individual website. So what we're going to see here is that when I come in as administrator, um, it's going to I'm going to be part of the directors allow list, and it's going to allow me to get into Facebook. And so we go straight to, and we go to the administrator who's part of the directors group, and we can see. Facebook's now available. So if we go back to here, what we've done here is we've created a director's um, rule, which whitelists individual sites based on a group. And then we've also created a um, whole category for marketing, which uh, um, whitelists whole categories based on groups. So there's been quite a lot involved in here. I'm James Sillett, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can contact me by any of the means shown below.